In this brain bit by bit, I'm going to show images of dermoid cysts, which can occur anywhere along the midline and are pretty rare intracranial. Dermoid cysts consist of ectopic skin tissue and they also include the skin appendages, so the hair follicles, the sebaceous and the sweat glands. And the sebaceous glands form the content of the cyst, which is very fatty. And this leads to the high signal on T1 and the low density on CT. So the content is fatty, but not fat. So it's not a lipoma. The wall of the cyst often contains calcifications and Typically, dermoid cysts do not enhance. The predilection along the midline has to do with the pathogenesis. And it is thought that dermoid cysts arise from sequestrated skin cells that end up in the subcutaneous tissue during embryonic fusion. So that's between the third and the fifth gestational week. And these sequestrated ectopic skin cells in the subcutaneous tissue give rise to the dermoid cyst. The presenting complaints of dermoid cysts in the brain are headache and seizures. And typically dermoid cysts grow very slowly because the wall of the cyst keeps producing sebum. And sometimes a dermoid cyst can rupture leading to fatty substance in the subarachnoid space and leading to an aseptic chemical meningitis. These are MR images from the same patient and you can see that the content of the cyst is not as homogeneous as for example an arachnoid cyst and these are CT images at another level where you can again see the fatty substance in the subarachnoid space and if there's rupture in the ventricles it typically presents as a fatty level floating on top of the CSF. The dermoid cysts can have a fistulous connection to the skin and this fistulous connection to the skin is called a dermal sinus and that's something that's important to be aware of because if there's connection of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue with the intracranial compartment the patients are more prone to infection. This is a drawing that illustrates the most common locations of dermoid cysts and the striped regions often have intracranial extension. And this is an example of a dermoid cyst with a dermoid sinus tract. The dermoid cyst is located in the posterior fossa and you can see the connection to the subcutaneous area. This girl has had meningitis twice and there's not only meningitis but also infection of the cyst. And in case of infection the cyst wall can enhance. And another place where you can often see a dermal sinus tract with a dermoid cyst, for example, in the subcutaneous tissue here of the nose connecting to the frontobasal region of the brain. There are not only dermoid cysts, but also epidermoid cysts. And epidermoid cysts contain only skin and not the skin appendages. And they occur slightly off midline. And it is thought that epidermoid cysts arise a little bit later in embryology than the dermoid cysts. And in the next video, I'm going to continue with epidermoid cysts. So I do hope you will stay.